Okay. Um, it's kind of weird that in discussing all these uh, ISO and noise issues, well, I'm going to start discussing ISO tonight if I feel uh, well enough. Um, but uh, the point that uh, is meant to be uh, gleaned from the prior video is that, you know, you should understand light. And, uh, you know, do you need that to take better pictures on the, you know, on the scientific end of it? No, but I mean, I think every professional photographer will tell you that uh, understanding photography is half science and uh, obviously half art. Usually, I mean, hope to God, for you, it's uh, far, far more art than it is science because you don't need to know how the hell a camera works. But knowing stuff, you know, knowledge is power. And uh, I, there's something I've actually encountered my entire life since I'm a ham radio operator. Uh, Kilo Delta 4, Papa Whiskey Julia, I actually need to uh, renew my license. Um, I've let it lapse, taking care of my wife dying of cancer. You know, things fall by the wayside. You know, such is life, right? But anyway, I've you know, been doing uh, ham radio for a long time. What I encounter is that people, people really do believe, and this isn't my opinion or belief, I mean, this is a hardcore fact, that, you know, this digital camera, whether it's a professional one or this stinking point-and-shoot, and, you know, this radio and this microwave are the same damn thing. Um, I actually made the mistake once, and boy, was it a stupid mistake. I accidentally had my 2-meter antenna. Uh, I thought I had it at 5 watts, and I really had it at 50 watts. <sighs> um, that will actually fry your face. You can actually feel it nearly instantly. And I was broadcasting indoors on a... Uh, on a whip antenna, a 5 8 wave, uh, 2 meter whip antenna, and using a, uh, it was like a trash can as a reflector, you know, for the reflection of, uh, of the signal. And I broadcast at 50 watts accidentally, and my god, it's just like my whole face. It wasn't like actually like burning, it was just like an invisible, of course it's invisible, duh. It's just like an invisible billion fingers reached into the my, my skin and my eyeballs, and it, it was just like it was... Something reached right behind your skin and was like pulling at you in a really creepy and awful way. And it was, ooh, there was a little bit of pain afterwards, but I obviously didn't broadcast for that long. Maybe it was like 10 seconds. It took about 5 seconds for my face to be hit. But the point is, is that uh, there have been a few people recently asked me, it's like, why is, you know, my, my Sony, which they fixed the heating issues mostly on video, but this isn't about video, this is about photography. Um, taking pictures, you know, out taking pictures is like, people have actually said my, my pictures get more noisy, you know, as I'm, you know, got the camera on, I'm taking, yeah, it's because of spillover, you know, it's a spillover that radiates. People think, well, it's thermal. It's like, well, if you heat, if you cool down a, a, a digital sensor uh, for astrophotography, which is what they do, they're either chilled with liquid helium, liquid nitrogen, or they're thermoelectrically cooled because, man, there's a serious... And check the link below where you can actually see a guy who sticks his point-and-shoot in the refrigerator. It's a Sony point-and-shoot. And it drastically changes the noise on the image. Drastically. This is a hardcore, undeniable fact. But people think that, you know, radio is one thing and light is another and a microwave, for example, is another. It's the same crap. Exact same stuff. And when you have all this uh, processing stuff, Kind of like I told you in the prior video, where, you know, the guy next door is playing his guitar. You know, it's just bleeding over. Okay? doesn't matter how good the shielding is. If you've got so much crap uh, piled into a tiny little box, um, uh, that's having to process enormously huge raw files, and all that noise is spilling over because all those little flexi cables and stuff, there's tons of stuff going through AD converters and SNR firmware, and it's being buffered. And uh, the actual uh, electromagnetic interfer interference and radio frequency interference is spilling over into the actual signal that is generated. Sony knows this. Everybody knows this. It is far worse on Sony than it is on Nikon cameras. Nikon and Canon DSLR is a big old camera. There, if you take a Nikon or a Canon apart, there's still a crap load of uh, stuff in there. I mean, just, just tons. But ain't nothing jammed together closer, tighter, better than a Sony. Sony has always been marvelous about packing 10 pounds of poo in a 5 pound bag. I mean, this is undeniable. That stuff is packed tight. And if you were to actually to, you know, bribe someone at Sony, you know, behind the scenes, like one of their top technicians that build this stuff, it's like, yeah, we got issues with noise, you know. We try to shield it as best we can. 
and do all we can, but it's a tiny little camera and there's all this uh, noise uh, spillover from the processing. People think it's actually thermal heat, but what it is is uh, RFI and EMI spillover due to the lossy nature. There's tons and tons and tons, this is irrefutable also, of signal being processed. The processor, the AD converter, the SNR firmware, the buffering, all that information shuttling hither and thither right behind the sensor. Just like, you know, if my neighbor, which I don't have a neighbor, I mean I'm in a house, I don't actually have another neighbor on the other side of this wall, but if I did, and he's sitting there playing, you know, all that spillover, you know, causes issues. That's the noise that, that people are... See, this, the, if uh, in astrophotography, the notion of not using, you know, having like a half million dollar telescope and using a regular sensor to gather images that was not chilled, because when you actually chill something down, it's like, well, you're dropping the heat. No, 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 that's not how it works. When you chill stuff, you actually change... The loss, things become less lossy. That's what it's technically called, lossy. The same way a superconductor set works. I mean, it does, the magnet doesn't levitate at room temperature. I had superconductor sets when I was younger. I had liquid nitrogen tanks, and you'd actually uh, apply liquid nitrogen. It would drop the temperature on that ceramic yttrium barium copper oxide so the magnet would levitate. Then what happened was is the actual atomic structure of that ceramic uh, composite and became incredibly, incredibly uh, low magnetic permeability. It's not technically superconductivity. So it's not the heat. It's the fact that the heat changes the electrical properties of how something becomes lossy. So technically when it comes to the chilling the sensor, it's not the actual thermal heat. It's that it changes the electrotransmittive properties of, uh, of uh, you know, all that processing that goes on so that it doesn't become lossy and spill over into the actual thing that you want. Because the electricity that goes on behind the sensor is the exact same electricity that makes up light. Light is electricity. Radio stuff is electricity. The microwave is electricity. It's all electromagnetic radiation. If you think that there's a difference between UV light and x-rays and radio waves and uh, visible optical waves, then you are smoking crack because it's all the same stuff. It's EMR, electromagnetic radiation. Technically, it's a coaxial circuit with transverse electrical magnetic, longitudinal dielectric. It is all the same stuff. And this, boys and girls, is why, especially your Sony, and, and this is true, I'm not really attacking Sony, but it is true of Sony. People ask me, why is my high megapixel Sony? Why is it noisy? You know, it's ultra high megapixel. It's because of all of that, all of that noise <coughs> blasting the actual signal itself. Now, you know, it's shielded as best they can do it. I'm not saying it's not properly shielded, but you can't stick all that heat and all that lossy EMI and RFI right next to the sensor. I mean, how close is it to the sensor? Is it like this? No. Is it like this? No. Is it like this? No. It's, it's like that. That's how tight it is. That is also un deniable. Nobody on earth is going to refute that because they can't. Anybody that holds a Sony, uh, you know, A7R, A7R2 is like, yeah, my God, you know, oh my God. There was a lot of stuff jammed in this little thing. Undeniable. Irrefutable. When you think you take an image, I mean, you think it goes right directly to the SD card? No, there's tons of signal processing going on. AD converters, processor, SNR firmware, the data that is going through various uh, cables that's causing RFI and EMI is bleeding over into the image. Fact. Fact. Nobody on earth can deny it. You can piss and moan or complain, call me a liar, but you can't call me wrong. You cannot call me wrong. Okay, glad you saw it here first. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye.